You said something is wrong with brothers who don't know how to support a sister. Yeah. Full and stop. <laughs> <laughs> and Mordecai was man enough to know that in order for me to be a man, I got to know how to support a woman. Something is wrong with brothers who don't know how to support a sister. It was a sister that raised you. It was a sister that taught you how to read. It was a sister that taught you how to bathe yourself. In the context of the vice president, were you trying to send a message? Uh, yeah, uh, that um, uh, we've got to be able to vote that misogyny is still real uh, in our community. Um, we've got to address it head on and act like, not act like it doesn't exist. Uh, the reality is if black men had voted, Stacey Abrams would be a governor. Uh, and so I think that we've got to do some real redress uh, that uh, after racism, the biggest ill in America is sexism. Uh, and I think it's part of the responsibility of this generation to deal with it head on. Wow. That man is, and let me be clear about this. I'm not engaging in hyperbole. He's a God damned fool. All right. Mm -hmm. You will not preach to me about misogyny when you cheated on your wife and you had a baby out of wedlock while married. Mm -hmm. All right. You will not preach to me when, again, you have taken advantage of poor people so that you can live in the lap of luxury, right? This is what we're dealing with, with Jamal Bryant. So this is just the beginning. And it makes me literally ill when I see so-called Christians following behind this Democrat party, lock, stock, what is it? Lock, stock and barrel. Lock, stock and barrel, yep. Yeah. It, it, it makes me sick. It literally does because these people are satanic. It's out. It, they don't want, they don't like God. And you say Jesus and they just go wild. I mean, it's, it's something to see. I'm seeing people. If you say Jesus around these people, that really, the demons come out because they go crazy about that. They do not, they took it out of their platform. Democratic Party does not mention God in there, but they mention a lot about abortion and they mention a lot about Donald Trump. These people are wicked, wicked. And I don't understand how any person, any Bible believing person can follow behind the Democrat Party. I, I don't see it at all. I don't remember when they took Jesus out of that platform, they had three votes. OK. They denied him thrice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. did it. Not me. They did it. So if you are, I know a few people who call themselves Bible believing Christians. But then when we go through the agenda items mm -hmm. for the Democrats, it's like you you don't see a problem here. No, they don't see it. And it, and I would yeah. even have a little more respect with these people if they said, you know what? I don't like Trump. I'm yes. not really Republican, but I can't even vote Democrat because of these the way they act. But you have people who ride hard for the Democrat Party and get upset with you for not voting for Kamala Harris. And they set claim to be so-called Christian. So you see that. And we didn't play sound on this one because we don't want any copyright issues. But that was Jamal Bryant's church in Atlanta, oh, yeah. Georgia. And they, it was as if it was Easter and the Easter bunny was walking down the aisle. They rolled out the red carpet for her. The Wicked Witch of the West has entered town and their yellow brick roll was rolled out. Shelly, what are your thoughts on this? this well, well, she had a skirt on that day. So she was in church, you know, hallelujah. Um, so they, it was good. It was all pomp and circumstance, pro forma. This is what I call acting. And unfortunately it takes place, it takes place in a lot of churches today. Um, they, like you said, they roll out the red carpet for these politicians and there's so much pomp and circumstance that it's, it's just foolishness. Of course, you saw all of the um, all the sorors there, you know, with their pink and green on and their pink in the in the audience. I mean, it reminds me. It, it reminds me of some, uh, I guess, Greek mythology when you know they have a lot of the orgies 
and they have you know a lot of the all of the the, the, the celebrations around the, the altars and all kinds of stuff back in the Roman and Greek days. That's what oh it kind of reminds gosh. me of. This is so sad. This is so sad, and it it reminds me of Hunger Games. It reminds me of these capital people and, you know, they're all dressed up and in and, and all their, you know, drew, their clothing and fancy clothing and stuff. And they just they grift off of off of the weak and off of, of middle class and poor people. It's it's theater. Yeah. But uh, look, <laughs> I have so many issues with the black church. It has turned into a giant grift. Jamal Bryant was literally run out of Baltimore City, okay? Uh, it, the videos online, you can see him confronted by people in Baltimore City in the wake of the Freddie Gray incident. People who, you know, this guy drove around town in a Bentley. Oh, right? yeah. mean, meanwhile, his parishioner's uh, median income was just above the poverty line, all right? Yeah. So... This is the type of charlatan pulpit pimp that, for whatever reason, these people are attracted to. But, you know, they say that the, the road to hell is wide and it's got a lot of people walking down that road. You said something is wrong with brothers who don't know how to support a sister. Yeah. Full and stop. <laughs> <laughs> and Mordecai was man enough to know that in order for me to be a man, I got to know how to support a woman. Something is wrong with brothers who don't know how to support a sister. It was a sister that raised you. It was a sister that taught you how to read. It was a sister that taught you how to bathe yourself. In the context of the vice president, were you trying to send a message? Uh, yeah, uh, that um, uh, we've got to be able to vote that misogyny is still real uh, in our community. Um, we've got to address it head on and act like, not act like it doesn't exist. Uh, the reality is if black men had voted, Stacey Abrams would be a governor. Uh, and so I think that we've got to do some real redress uh, that uh, after racism, the biggest ill in America is sexism. Uh, and I think it's part of the responsibility of this generation to deal with it head on. Wow. Shut that up. man is, a, and let me be clear about this. I'm not engaging in hyperbole. He's a God damned fool. All right. Mm -hmm. You will not preach to me about misogyny when you cheated on your wife and you had a baby out of wedlock while married. Mm -hmm. All right. You will not preach to me when, again, you have taken advantage of poor people so that you can live in the lap of luxury, right? This is what we're dealing with, with Jamal Bryant. So right. again, he just wants proximity to power. We need to push back strongly on these types of people because they've taken advantage of black people for far too long. You're right. And right. It, you can see that he's demon filled. These men, they start to look very feminine. Have you all noticed that? Absolutely. Like, I was going to say that. Yeah, he didn't used to look like that. Mm -hmm. But as as they start to get more and more uh, into this leftism religion. Communism, Marxism, it, that's why. Like male, like, like manly women. I was going to say that when I was looking at him, somehow communists, Marxists, they all kind of look the same, kind of gay. They have this, like, like really soft skin and the way that they talk and smile because they're so deviant. You know, he cheated on his wife, but he also might have cheated on his wife with a man. Oh. I would not be surprised. Oh, I, I would not be surprised I at surprised all. Either. And this is how they are because he does not believe in the Bible, in what the Bible teaches. He uses it. And if you notice with his 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 pulpit, he has the 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 fist, the right. like the Black Lives Matter, or whatever you know, the p power fist and the cross. And this is something that we've talked about: is how communists infiltrate black churches. We talked about it. There was a the book called "Communism and Common Sense." They spoke exactly about that. That's been happening since uh, the. 
the 60s. And this is a, a perfect, he, this guy is a perfect example of that happening. They're using the black church to, to spread Marxism, to spread this evilness and, and, uh, and as you mentioned, spread that ass. Exactly. They're all doing look, it. Look, look, I don't, um, I don't know about Jamal Bryan with other men. I do know that he has admitted, I don't know. And I guess other, several other women, I, I do know that part. And so I don't know about the other men. However, comma, this is, I think part of one of the reasons why men, why church, I guess church membership or participation has declined because right. you have people who um, misrepresent, and that's putting it mildly, they misrepresent the gospel and what church is really for. They use it for their own uh, political, like you said, Tyrone proximity to power. They use it for their own status, if you will, and their own profundity, which the lack thereof, but they use it for themselves. They misrepresent, they mis, uh, misuse and abuse what church is really supposed to be for and for whom it for whom it is this is all about his uh persona his popularity this has okay. nothing to do with the flock if you will that he's quote unquote supposed to be leading good bad or indifferent sinners um coming through the door that's what church is supposed to be for not for this foolishness and if you look at that congregation it's predominantly women out of any black church in America, out of out of a hundred parishioners, you've got three men. One is the old deacon who just been coming for the last 50 years. He's not going to stop now. One is the cat that's on the make. OK, he was at Solid Rock last week. Grace Tabernacle the week before. He's just trying to get into some church girl's pants. And then there's a choir director and he's gay. Those are the three guys for every 100 you find in a black church these days. Now, the other thing is how soon we forget. Black men overwhelmingly supported Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Okay. There's no misogyny here. There's a desire to be able to afford a home. Okay. To grow financially. All right. To secure your retirement. That's what we're dealing with. And again, we got Jamal Bryan, who's a multimillionaire. Okay. Because all he has to do is get up in the pulpit pervert God's word and he gets paid. Okay. Exactly. So yes. it's different for the rest of us. Right. And and particularly speaking of Jamal Bryant, he's in a lot, he's he's in a lot of trouble what he's doing. You know, the Jesus talked about in the Bible greater sin. He was referring to um uh was um Pontius Pilate and he said he handed him over and that was a greater sin because he knew what he was doing was wrong and he did it anyway. And what, what Jamal Bryant is doing, he's supposed to be leading a flock. He is supposed to be shepherding people towards God. He holds a position of leadership and power in the church. If he is knowingly leading people down the wrong path, he will be judged and he will be judged righteously by God. And, and so this is what you don't play around with this type of stuff. You don't do that. He will be punished for what he is doing because that is this is wrong. If he knows what he's doing is a lie, if he knows what he's doing is not the word of God and he's particularly doing it for money, for power or what have you, he will be judged. He right. will be judged. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a there is a biblical standard. I remember my former pastor, God rest his soul, used to talk about pastors and preachers. Mm -hmm. They have uh, I don't know, a higher, I don't know, a higher unction, if you will, a higher degree and a higher, um, they're gonna have a, like you said, a, a more severe standard because they are charged with again, teaching, leading the flock. Yes, everybody is a sinner. Everybody's going to right. mess up. Even when you go to church every Sunday, you're going to mess up, right? Um, that doesn't mean that pastors and preachers can't mess up. But like you're saying, when you are purposefully misleading another person, um, you, you, you're on purpose. Let me say that. I'll keep it there. When you are purposefully misleading another person, that 
is a greater, a greater sin. Absolutely. 